Well, in my last video I had a look at this Academia Omnilux Illuminati Countdown Clock, if you like, which is located in their Thermaturgy folder on their website. And Thermaturgy, which is um, perhaps Miracle Worker, or perhaps um, the discipline that encompasses blood magic and other sorcerer's arts. So take your pick. In the source code we've found you can get the end date of the clock which is September 9, 2012 at 1.23 p.m. and 33 seconds and that would correlate to the seven aside soccer game on the last day of the Paralympics so clearly this is an eye and this is the solar system perhaps looking down from above because the solar system turns anti-clockwise this turns anti-clockwise we've got the 12 points uh, 12 signs of the zodiac we've got here 9 if we click on here we'll get 11 click here we get 5 and we click here we get 6 and we click here we get 10 okay but what happens when the clock gets to zero so let's have a look at that okay so I've reset my computer clock to just before September 9 at 1 23 p.m. and 33 seconds and that's the time we're counting down to just to see what will happen and it doesn't reset it just sits at zero however we already know from the last video that when the clock reaches zero the longitudinal position of the moon in the sky on September 9 exactly matches that of the December 26 Boxing Day tsunami and September 11 2001 the moment of the initial attack at 8:46 Eastern Time of course I mentioned in the last video about Spook's Code 9 which is a BBC drama about a nuclear attack on the opening day of the Olympics and if we go down to the Wikipedia page you'll see that Adrian Hahn one of the people involved in creating it says Spook's Code 9 they got it backwards so what is he trying to say there the series was created by David Wollstonecroft and here we're looking at one of his books and as you can see we've got the left eye symbolism again as in the phoenix or the eagle is facing to its right and looking at you with its left eye of course the BBC doesn't have a monopoly on the plot line involving the detonation of a massive bomb inside of a sports stadium we also have the Dark Knight Rises which incidentally premiered on July 16 2012 in fact it was 6 p.m. Eastern Time as we can see from these news reports which of course in summer is Eastern Daylight Time which is four hours behind UTC time. So that gives us 10 p.m. UTC. So just out of curiosity, where exactly was the moon at 10 p.m. UTC time on July 16th? Let's have a look. From the perspective of the Earth, it's in the same longitudinal position. That's the text of 9-11. To be fair though, it is slightly up. If the premiere had been at 9-11 p.m. UTC time, then it would have been exactly right. And by pure coincidence, on the morning of September 11, 2001, this is the ad that appeared on ABC Breakfast Show just before the event. Hello? Things are heating up. Now, by the entire ABC network, Good Morning America was in progress in the East Coast and the Midwest, but we're joined by the entire network just to show you some pictures at the foot of New York City. This is at the World Trade Center. Is there more to this connection? Well, let's let YouTuber Scrawny to Brawny join the dots for us. suspect in this case, 24-year-old James E. Holmes. <laughs> Trying to light it. I'm sure it'll happen eventually. And there it is. The Olympic torch is lit. Dame Kelly Holmes first.
Of course, Aurora Colorado theater killings bring to mind the Mayan calendar-inspired apocalyptic murals at the Denver New World Airport in Colorado. So is there a Mayan calendar connection to all of this? As other people have pointed out, there's another clock at academy.illuminatiorder.eu and if we put in the password, and here as you can see, we've got the same countdown. And in case you're wondering about the connection, we can find the Mayan calendar clock showing here. Okay, so we get from this clock, you click on it, you see no matter where you click, we've got this image of what appear to be planetary alignments, I guess this is the Pleiades, it would be the Sun, the Moon, what are these other crescents are, I'm not sure. This is the Mayan calendar connection, so it's not ambiguous now, they really are talking about Mayan calendar here. Okay, Wikipedia on Maya calendar. A cyclical interpretation is also noted in the Maya creation accounts in which the present world and the humans in it were preceded by other worlds which were fashioned in various forms by the gods, but subsequently destroyed. The present world also had a tenuous existence, requiring the supplication of offerings of periodic sacrifice to maintain the balance of continuing existence. I'll get a little bit about the history of football. Football was invented by the Mayan and Aztec Indians in Central America. At the Mayan ruins in the city of Copan, Honduras, they had one of the first soccer fields ever. The civilization dates back more than 10,000 years ago. In this civilization, football teams would compete against each other and the captain of the winning team was sacrificed after the game. The act of being sacrificed was considered an honor to these people. Now, there can't be anyone left on the planet who hasn't had this Mayan calendar end date drummed into them. Of course, it's December 21, 2012. And at 11 a.m. and 12 minutes is actually the solstice or the beginning of the new age. So 11.11 .11 would be the last minute of the old age, or the current age. And as I understand it, it's on the last day of the current age that the world is supposed to be destroyed. In other words, on December 20, at 11.12 a.m. UTC time, would be the beginning of the last day, in which case, the destruction of the world. So let's have a look to see where the moon would be at that particular point in time. So at 12 minutes past 11 on December 20, 2012. And of course, the moon is nowhere to be seen. However, what we're supposed to be looking at, of course, is the alignment between the Earth, the Sun, and the galactic core, which is the whole purpose of that alignment. So let's go and have a look at that. So we'll zoom in onto the Sun, turn around to see where the Earth is. So when we look at the Earth from the perspective of the Sun, on this last day of the age, you see the position in the sky is very similar to the position of the sky for the Moon, for 9-11, and for 9 9. So the position of the moon on these auspicious dates seems to be symbolic of the position of the earth in relation to the sun on the last day of the age. So, what about the Holmes connection? Well, I was first thinking in terms of Sherlock Holmes, especially the 2009 movie where we have the equivalent of a dark knight dying and being resurrected and trying to form a new world order to rule for a thousand years. But I might have been off the mark with that. Maybe we should be looking at Comet Homes, 17P Homes. I was looking at some videos by Keith Hunter regarding the Mayan Aztec calendar. He mentions how in 2007, on October 23rd and 24th, Comet Homes unexpectedly brightened, and some people were referring to it as a sign of the Blue Kachina. The blue Gachina, according to the Hopi legend, is a sign that appears in the sky ahead of the red Gachina, the red Gachina being the great purifier that comes at the end of the age. So let's go back and have another look at this Academia Omnilux countdown clock, and in particular, the end time. Is there more to this time than is obvious? Okay, this is the exoteric time, easy enough to find. Is there an esoteric value here that we're missing? Especially this number. 13, 23, 33, apart from the obvious Masonic connections, why this number? How many seconds through the day is it, for example? Well, it turns out to be 48,213 seconds into the day. What are the factors that make up 48,213? Well, let's have a look. 48,213. These are the factors. Okay, so it divides by 11, 33, 99, 487. Okay, we've got 99 in there, of course, means it divides by 11 and 33. Okay, so now what? Well, 
This is when you sometimes just get lucky. In Keith Hunter's most recent video, he talks about the solar storm of 1859, the Carrington Superflare, the largest recorded geomagnetic storm, aurora we've seen around the world, aurora. Telegraph systems all over Europe and North America failed, in some cases shocking the telegraph operators. Telegraph pylons threw sparks and telegraph paper spontaneously caught fire. Some telegraph systems continued to send and receive messages despite being disconnected from their power supplies. If this were to happen today, this would be absolute disaster. Forget about the debt, there'd be no digital money. Forget about your bank balances, forget about just-in-time delivery. There'll be no computer systems. Keith suggests that the Carrington event of 1859 could have been the result of a unique set of conjunctions which, interestingly enough, involve the dwarf planet Cirrus. Now, Cirrus is located in the asteroid belt, and perhaps it was once the moon of a planet located between Mars and Jupiter, which was destroyed at some time in the past, perhaps Tiamat. I've never considered Cirrus in any of these conjunctions or alignments that I look at, but it is interesting. So I started looking at some of them and I found that there does seem to be some correlation with Cirrus and events. So what does Wikipedia have to say about Cirrus? Well among other things it says Cirrus is the only one among Rome's many agricultural deities to be listed among the Diaconstantes, Rome's equivalent of the twelve Olympians of Greek mythology. That's interesting. Of course we've got another page here full of technical details about Cirrus and it goes on to say it is named after Cirrus, the Roman goddess of growing plants, the harvest, and motherly love. The harvest. So let's see where the dwarf planet Cirrus is on September 9 at 1.23 p.m. UTC time. Hmm. Okay, so it's very close to the moon. Let's look into this further. And this is when I got lucky. I was looking at this picture of Cirrus. A number jumps out. This one. 487. Remember the number of seconds into the day that the Omnilux clock stops on September 9. 48,213. Well, it turns out that 99 times 487 equals 48,213. And 487 kilometers is the equatorial radius of Cirrus. So perhaps this time of 13.23 and 33 seconds is not a time at all, but in fact it's a code for a conjunction. And what conjunction would that be? A conjunction between the Moon and Cirrus. And the obvious time to look at would be the emergency code number for London, or for Great Britain, which is 999. So September 9 at 9 a.m. So let's have a look. Where would the moon be if we set the time to 9 a.m. on September 9, 2012? Could it possibly line up with Cirrus? <laughs> it does. It's perfect. So are the powers that be expecting a Carrington event at 9 a.m. on September 9? Or are they planning a mass human sacrifice to avert such an event? Not to be outdone by the Brits, the Australians have their hold on Colorado ad situated in the bombed out NRL football stadium. The Australian National Rugby League will have their elimination final in Canberra at the Canberra Stadium on September 9. Canberra being the capital of Australia is of course built on ley lines, the Earth's energy grid just like London or Washington DC. There are certainly some things we don't know about. And one thing we do know about is we're entering in some sort of seismically active period again where we've got significant earthquakes every four and a half days, which doesn't seem normal and is certainly not a good sign. We certainly seem to be time to make whatever preparations you think might be necessary to protect you or your family, whether that be for a Carrington event or false flag or perhaps both. I wish you all best of luck and hopefully nothing happens and I'm completely wrong about this. Thank you for watching.